guys. I just wanted to come real quick. <laughs> I know this looks odd because you see my little shark back roaming across the floor doing its job. But I was inspired by this this morning just simply because as I was um, in the kitchen washing dishes. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. It always likes to get in these little uh, crooks and corners and then it gets in there and can't get out. And I gotta help it. <laughs> Hence, brings me to the title, um, with all this technology, God is still in control. As I was washing dishes this morning, I was um, hearing the shark go throughout the house. It came into the kitchen. Yeah, it's disappeared under the couch. Under the, under the love seat now, but it'll be out. It'll be back out. Um, but I was washing dishes this morning. And the shark came in the kitchen, and it was just roaming around and stuff like that. And so um, it was coming over to where I was at, trying to roll up on my feet and stuff. And I had to, like, you know, move out the way and stuff like that. And so um, and finally it was, you know, getting into spots where it couldn't get out. And I had to just go over there and then just pick it up and move it to a different spot or whatever because it was having difficulty so you know this shark is has been programmed to you know to do what it does you turn it on and it goes throughout the house cleaning your house it's technology you know but even with the technology and even with the shark you know as you can see it doing its job right now knowing what to do it still needed help for me so it wasn't smart enough just to get itself out of a predicament when it you know got into a tight spot it took me to having to come and pick it up and get it back along its way so i'm saying that to say you know men has um you know come up with technology and i'm not knocking technology you know technology is good uh so long as you recognize that technology can't trump god God is over technology. God is the one that equips an individual to be able to be inspired with something to make the technology. But yet the glory all falls back to God. So we just need to be cognizant of that and know that, yeah, we have all this stuff. It's amazing what, you know, you got Alexa, you got smart homes, you got ring doorbells, you got all this thing. Look, I mentioned Alexa. I don't know if you noticed that, but as soon as I said her name, the light lit up on her because she hears her name and knows she needs to, sp she, she, she's being beckoned to or summoned to hear what I have to say and answer whatever it is I'm asking her. So again, you know, the technology is cool. I'm not knocking the technology. Just don't think that technology has uh oh see now look he's shark then caught on to a cord see it and it can't go no further it then got himself in a predicament which you know what man does is get himself in predicaments to come up with this great designs and stuff but sometimes those great designs just don't work out you know because you're not god oh well here look look at there now it's just completely stuck and i gotta come help it out does that, is anybody getting a word from this? Because I certainly am. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Anyway, let me restart this here. All right, Shark, you can be back along your way. So, you know, that kind of pretty much... Um, this advanced technology just cannot trump God. God is over technology. It's God that we should be in awe of, not the shark, not Alexa, not the smart home, not the ring doorbells, all that stuff. It's God that whom we should be in awe of, in amazement of, of what he does. So, yeah, guys, that's all I wanted. I just, uh, it, it came to my mind, you know, God, he can speak to us in so many ways. Sometimes we look for a specific, you know, a specific atmosphere or, you know, just being in church or just uh, locked hands in prayer or something for God to speak, which he will and can speak, but he can speak any way he wants to. I had a donkey speak, speak in the Bible, and I'll re reference that in the description box because I'm not exactly sure where it's at, but that's just to go to show that when God gives us a word, Word, you know, speak it speak it because somebody can get something from that technology sometimes 
it may not always do what it's, well, here we go. He's stuck again. He may not always do what it's supposed to do. Well, he made his way out. See, see, okay. All right. Um, so yeah, it may not always do what you uh, think that it's, or what it's been designed to do. So rather than getting all in a tither, you know, I know when we're on our computers and laptops and we're just like, why is this so slow? Or why is this doing this? Or why is that doing that? Well, it's just, you know, man-made technology and it's going to do that. So don't put so much stock in the technology, but recognize who's over the technology. I thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. I hope you got something out of the video and I will catch you in the next one. Peace. Hey guys, I wanted to come back really quick. Uh, I mentioned about the donkey and how God can speak at any time through whatever he wants to. So I wanted to go ahead and share that with you really quick. I'm just going to start at verse 21. I encourage you to read the whole chapter to get the full synopsis of what's going on. But it is, it is in regard to Balaam and his donkey. I'm going fast uh, so as to not to make this video too long. But I'm coming from Numbers 22 verse 21, easy English version. In the morning, Balaam put a blanket on his donkey. He went with the men to Moab. The Lord was angry because Balaam went with the men. He put an angel on the road to stop Balaam. Balaam was riding on his donkey and two servants were with him. The angel of the Lord was holding a sword. The donkey saw the angel, so it tried to leave the road and it tried to go into a field. So I want to stop quickly and just say even the donkey recognized God for who God was. That's a word for someone. He recognized him, and this is the reverential fear that he has for him uh, in respect to how mighty and powerful God is. So sometimes we need to recognize that although there is technology out there, but we need to recognize who God is and how God is over whatever technology, whatever man has created uh, to make it look so good. God trumps all of that. Anyway, let me continue. So... It tried to leave the road, and this is the donkey that tried to leave the road, and it tried to go into a field. So it's trying to get away, uh, basically because it's recognizing how powerful God is and out of respect for him. And he's probably wondering, what have we done to cause God to step down and intervene on this situation? So the donkey saw the angel, so it tried to leave the road, and it tried to go into a field. Balaam hit the donkey to make it go back to the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood on a narrow road. There were walls on each side of the road. When the donkey, donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it pushed towards the wall. Balaam had his foot fixed between the donkey and the wall. Balaam hit the donkey again. So the donkey is kind of stuck in a spot where it can't get out and it's trying to move around and God has put it in a spot where it can't move. So I'm thinking about the shark and how the shark got stuck in spots where it couldn't get out and I had to intervene and go pick up the shark. Even though the shark is designed to do a certain task, even I had to intervene because the shark is just technology that men has created. But again, God trumps technology. Let me finish. The angel of the Lord moved and he stood in another narrow place. There was no space to turn around. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down. So it succumbed. It lay down on the road. Balin was angry. He hit the donkey with his stick. The Lord made the donkey speak. It said, what have I done? Why have you hit me three times? Balaam said to the donkey, you have made me look silly. Sometimes technology can make us look silly. Because how many times have you been at your computer or on your phone, your laptop, and you're like, stupid computer? And you say stuff like that, and it's like, just a computer. <laughs> Yet we're talking to it like, you know, it really knows what we're saying and stuff. And so we look a little silly. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm thinking about the donkey and that, you know, his... His, he was designed to be rode on or, you know, lead the way or whatever he was doing with Balaam. But he couldn't fulfill what he was supposed to be doing because he recognized God for who God was. And so eventually he just had to give in to that. And so I think about, you know, with the computer, with the technology and stuff, uh, it gets frustrating uh, when it doesn't do what it's been designed to do. And um, I used to get so upset with my husband, husband, <clears throat> husband, because um, he's a computer engineer and um, 
I would always like expect him to, you know, have all the answers as to why my computer or my phone is not doing what it's supposed to do. But that just helps me put things in perspective to know that, yes, this has been, you know, designed to do this and it's designed to do that. But we don't need to lose sight of the fact that it's still just technology. It's still just a phone. It's still just a computer. It's still just a laptop. These devices are not God, although the way some of us hang on to them, you know, so much and just can't be without it. Now, granted, I know that we use it for a whole lot of stuff, but sometimes we just have to put our phone, laptop, and get away from our computers away and, um, you know, spend some time with God. But before I just, you know, continue on to ramble, I just wanted to make mention of that. And I hope someone got something from the video. I hope you were blessed by it. I certainly was. And, um, recording this video and bringing it to you guys so yes i will see you all in my next video and again i'm saying peace out